very thoughtful when it comes to me and my goals. And I would like to someday make it right with them. <laughs> you have. Yeah. You have. We love you, You have. I love them, too. Uh, yeah, over the last eight days, I've really run into a lot of people who are just really, I've brought them down the trail with me in my heart. And it's very uh, motivating. This morning, or whenever that was, was the most challenging couple hours of my life dog mushing. And that was very touch and go as far as whether I was going to make it to safety or not with my dog team. Um, what was the most challenging part about it? Uh, the 50 mile an hour wind pushing you out to sea and there was no ice in the sea. And um, then you couldn't, for some reason they keep saying there's no snow out here but there was a ground blizzard and you couldn't see. So there's snow somewhere. So most of the time I wasn't anywhere near the trail. And the biggest plus I had is that I've been to Nome in the summertime, so I knew landscape. I knew I had to stay in between the lagoon and the ocean somewhere. And and so apparently I passed Jeff at some time, but I never saw him and he never saw me. And but it was if a person were to stop out there as he did. That, that was not a that was a life or death thing there and I was that close to that being me so um what made you decide to leave safety Dallas left (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I was sitting in safety and there was some snow machiners who had come from Gullivan and everything and there's and they were talking about how they flipped their machines in the wind and they they couldn't find they almost snow machine by safety because they couldn't see it and they just rescued Jeff and then we listened to the radio it was talking about how it was going to get worse and worse and hurricane winds and that's interfering then this really nice lady gave me a cup of coffee and <laughs> <laughs> then I took a nap and I, I kept walking outside to look at my dogs, uh, who were hunkered down and pretty happy about being hunkered down. And I, uh, it just didn't seem like it was had gotten any better. But I hadn't been outside in about 45 minutes uh, when Dallas came. And I looked out the, I walked outside when he was going, and noticed that he wasn't stopping. <laughs> so I thought. I could catch him. Did you catch him? It looks like on the spot. The only re- reason I'm asking is because... No, he's, he's getting the <laughs> truck right now. <laughs> no, I know. Good answer. I realize that's a dumb question, Allie, but the reason I'm asking is because I think we were all glued to the tracker and there was a brief moment where it looked like you guys were like right together. Where? Cape Nome? Yeah, somewhere. Probably uh, elevation. Sh- no, he's smart enough that he didn't look back too much to tell me where he was and, and he thought I was his father so he really wanted to beat me <laughs> so he didn't know you were stopped in safety I think he thought I was ahead of him and he knew Jeff scratched but he, I, I think he didn't think I was there or something I don't know um, can you talk a little bit about your dogs I know you dropped a few well like yeah, I was really worried about my dogs when I came into safety. I actually was very unfriendly to all the people there at the beginning because they wanted to interview me and everything, and I almost socked the guy with the light. I apologize, whoever that guy was. <laughs> because I was really worried about my dogs. They gave it all they had in the wind, and I needed to tend to them without talking to anyone about it. <coughs> uh so the only reason I made it to safety is because I have that little dog, Keto, and she's phenomenal. She puts all her t- 
trust in me, and I I jihad her around pieces of driftwood that should have broke my foot. <coughs> and she drug me out off the ocean and out of the lagoon, and she's phenomenal. And her brother and sister, Nacho and Chica, were right behind her. But then Chica must have stepped in, I don't know, a piece of driftwood or something, because she hurt her leg. And then the two behind them, Willie and Waylon brothers, Waylon doesn't have a lot of hair, and he was in that blizzard, and I kept having to put him on the, I don't know what you call it, lee side or windward side, whichever side doesn't have a lot of wind. Uh, but they're doing all right. I was worried about Waylon. He's sleeping inside tonight. I told him. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, thumbs up. And then Pud and Clyde were behind them, and I was really worried about Pud coming into safety, too. He was he was limping. And you can't stop out there. You can't just stop in 50-mile-an-hour wind and walk up to your dogs and do stuff. It was bad. You couldn't do that. So we had to keep going. And then my bro brake broke. I forgot about that. So I fixed it in the wind, and then the dogs got all hunkered down like they were going to stay in one place, which I imagine is what happened to Jeff. But then I asked them to go, and they said, you're crazy, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which is what they've been saying all race. <laughs> yeah, this is a particularly rough idea run for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the hardest race I've ever done. And the every day, when we left White Mountain this morning, last night, whenever that was, you know, someone had the gall to say something like, oh, well, I'm sure the trail will be, this will be some of the easiest part of the trail. And I laughed out loud. I was like, every day has been harder than the next day. Every day has been harder. And it was incredibly hard. Well, is it morning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This morning, last night. The hardest ever to, for me. And I I can put up with a lot. It was incredibly hard. To be able to hang on to your handlebar and steer your sled and steer your dogs and not be able to stand up because the wind's hitting you so hard. And you're in a, you're in between a rock and a hard place because you came down, you passed the shelter cabin because it wasn't that bad there. Your next place to stop is safety, so you gotta go. Which is, I guess, why it's called safety. But I could just ramble right now, so. <laughs> um, I'm gonna ask you a really hard question. Wait, I <laughs> forgot a, forgot two dogs. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. So I said. Clyde and Pud, I've got Olivia and uh, Boondocks, two sisters, year apart, and then Mac and Sissy. Sorry. Well, how did I Mac do? He's the biggest dog on your team. Mac was actually screaming up Cave Noam. He started screaming when I was screaming. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> he yelled back. I guess he said he was trying his hardest. Um. This is that question for me to ask you because I don't want to offend you. <laughs> and I know you know it's coming. Um, three second places. Three second places? Yeah. Better than scratching. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't watch him get the truck, I'm sure. I mean, but... I'll buy you a truck. Okay. <laughs> you just got a fancy wrap on your truck. I know, I like my truck. But that one's like... Uh, sure, yeah, hindsight, blah, 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 but second's pretty good. <laughs>